Chapter 9 There was an outdoor cafe on the downtown Oak Street Beach of Lake Michigan, where he was to meet Bella a few days later, and he combed the sands with his toes for her. May as well have been searching for shark teeth on a freshwater lake. He wouldn't find her. She had gone to an old high-rise where a therapist he had once seen practiced, where the lobby was gilded and the deli served fine corned beef. He never went to therapy anymore, though the coffee table in his apartment sometimes lay leg up, face down in his despair. She stood there outside the building, leaning against a column and smoking. Clay ornamental visage staring down at her from the second floor where they were fixed between the walls of glass. What a bitch, she said under her breath, between drags. Her therapist really pissed her off, though she needed her. Told her things she didn't want to hear. Not one of those poor souls bankrupt to love who disguise themselves as therapists in order to feed on the love and admiration of those who needed real therapy. Will lay down on a towel by the water and watch the clouds drift past the Hancock building, towering over the beach. He saw faces formed in the clouds, staring down at him and across the lake. The skyscraper didn't move. The clouds did. The faces did. The pollution in the water did. The water did. The sand moved to make room for him. Tried to swallow him whole. A man with a big belly hanging over his BVDs sent shell kids screaming. Twenty feet out from the shore, Fellini struggled with the oars. A rhinoceros weighing down his boat. The boat before him did not move, just like the skyscraper behind him. She's not coming, he told himself, and watched on his elbows some girls folding a large towel and singing, Tight squeeze, ocean breeze, as they braided one another's hair. He pulled his elbows up and fell back on the towel deeper into the sand. The top of the skyscraper was far away, like the bottom of Fellini's boat, leagues under the sea. What a bitch. I'd rather sink here in the sand, he thought. So miserably he missed her, and the anger coursed through him. She was only five minutes late and waiting for a bus to take her to him. But he was impatient and ran, then walked when he could no longer run, two miles home in the crippling summer Chicago ozone heat. He was even sorry that he missed her, for he missed her so badly, like his mother's potato salad, he was at her mercy. Who's the bitch, he asked himself, trying to laugh. Can't you leave her alone?